Hello everyone, so today we're going to be switching bags and dishing on a couple hot topics. Interested to see what we get into? Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Caleb and on here you're gonna find a lot of things like luxury shopping, reveals, reviews, unboxings, luxury travel, daily vlogs, pretty much anything that has to do with life and style. You guessed it, you're gonna find right here. So before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, say hi to me down in the comments, you know the drill. And if you haven't already, which I don't know why not, find me over on Instagram, caleb.snell.designer, and let's carry the conversation on over there. All right, so today we are going to be switching into my new bag, which I just cut the tags off. If you didn't catch it on my Instagram stories, make sure you're watching those to stay up to date with whatever it is that I share. Who knows what that could be? Might be interesting, probably is it. You do you. Before we get into it, because I have some things that I want to discuss with you guys first, I want to say a huge thank you for helping us hit 2,000 subscribers. I think by the time this goes up, we're already past 2030, so here we go. We're making it, we're getting there, you guys. So to celebrate, I'm going to be doing a Q&A for you guys, just so that way you can kind of get to know me a little bit more. As you already know, I'm an open book, so there's really not any secrets around here. I pretty much spill everything in these videos and on my Instagram, probably overshare. That's fine, safe space. Anyway, but if there's anything you wanna know, um, open book, ask me anything you want. I'm gonna have you guys sound out down in the comments below. I'm going to post on my Instagram, let you ask me questions over there if you want, caleb.snall.designer, shameless plug again. And also on my community page here on YouTube. So think of some interesting questions and yeah, let's, let's get down to it. Anyway, so today we're going to be switching from my Fendi Large Peekaboo into my new Muse 2. It got me thinking, both of these, I mean, this is, my Peekaboo's looking a little sad these days, so that's another topic. I got to thinking, I'm like, these were both once really expensive bags, and I got them on Fashion File for next to nothing, so it got me thinking, are bags a good investment? Hold that thought, let me get the stuffing out of this bag and we'll start switching things over. <laughs> Okay, well now that he's empty, he looks really sad. So let's get some stuff in there. I have been using my large Fendi Peekaboo. This is the tan one with the, you guessed it, denim interior. I love this bag. However, he's looking a little rough. He's seen some things and it's time for a spa day. Do Fendi bags get spa days? Is that just for Hermes and Chanel? I'm thinking of sending him off to maybe Rago Brothers or I really like the Restry, Restry in the UK. They do beautiful work, but I don't know if they take US bags. I really want to get him clean, get some color touch-ups, uh, redo some of the edge coating on the handles and things, and just kind of overall freshen him up. I'm not expecting a 12-year-old bag to look brand new. I mean, it's still got a lot of life in him and he looks a little sad. So let me know down in the comments if there are any restoration houses or workshops that you've sent your bags to and if you had good results, bad results, I want to hear it all because I'm not trying to risk my gorgeous Fendi Peekaboo. This is my first Peekaboo. As I was saying, are luxury bags, are they an investment? Are they worth spending your money on? And short answer, no. I said it. Don't hate me, don't roast me in the comments. Let me let me uh, explain my thought process here. In my mind, unless you're buying like the Louis Vuitton, like Big Five, your Speedy, Neverfull, Alma, whatever is big from LV right now, or your Hermes Birkin, your Kelly, Chanel flaps of any sort really, minus seasonal bags, I guess, they're probably not a good investment. Because if you think about it, this was originally a $2,000 bag. I got it for 400. 10, 11 years later. This was what, a two or $3,000 bag for its time. I think these now go for like four or five for this size. I got it for like 600. Granted, this one's rough. I don't wanna hear it. We know it's rough. My black one, which is nearly flawless, I got for only a thousand. Peekaboos though, for some reason, don't have a really good resale value. So that's another thing too to consider. When you're buying a bag, are you buying it for yourself to enjoy or are you buying it to resell? Now, if you're buying it to resell, then you're probably not enjoying the bag because you have to baby it, you have to take care of it because it needs to be pretty much flawless by the time you sell it if you want to recoup your money. Now, granted, that's if you're buying like brand new. If I were to turn around and sell this peekaboo, I'd probably get out of it what I paid for it at this point. And that's another thing. How long are you going to keep the bag? If you're going to keep the bag for more than a season or two, especially if it's a hot bag, you're probably not going to get your money back unless it's like a really rare collab piece. And even then, a lot of like the Richard Prince bag, bags from LV that were huge, 
not even what seven eight nine years ago i don't remember when they came out well i think it was 08 so it's been a good minute there's one now on fashion file for like a third of its original price and it has exotic trim what do you guys think constitutes i think he's empty constitutes good resale value that got me thinking so at one point i i've had a couple bag collections in my time i lost one in a fire rebought everything sold it all bought all lv sold it all bought almost my entire vehicle paid for with the collection. I used to think that meant that bags were a good investment and you would always get your return back, make money. I don't really think that's the case anymore because in my mind at the time I didn't realize that I had bought all that LV and then sold it like nearly a year later. They hadn't depreciated, they hadn't really, it was a good time to sell. Now if I had kept those bags seven, eight, nine years, used them as one does, would I have been able to get the money back that I put in in the first place? Who's to say? A lot of it was Epi. We know Epi doesn't have a good resale value. The monogram pieces of course would retain value if not go up because everyone loves monogram. PVC coated canvas, who knew? So it's just kind of weird to think like, what what bags are, are we buying as investments and do they make a good return? I'm gonna say no, and especially now. So when I started buying bags, like you could get a very nice brand new bag for around $1,000. And these days, it's like a pouch almost. If you're lucky, um, a lot of bags now are like starting, what, two, three thousand dollars which is absolutely insane. Eventually, that market is gonna be completely washed out. Now granted, your Birkins, your Kellys, most of your Chanel flaps will probably always be okay. But again, keep in mind, fashion is cyclical, so just because something's great now doesn't mean it's gonna be great in five to 10 years. Maybe that's gonna fall out of style. As much as I want one, I'm also a little tired of seeing Birkins everywhere. <gasps> I said what I said, don't hate me, they're fabulous bags. I do, I do want one, but it seems like you see them everywhere now. They're not quite as special as they were before social media. My next point, is social media making fashion trends move faster? Like before an it bag would be good for what, two, three years, and now like you're lucky if anyone's talking about it a month after it came out, in most cases, in my opinion in my humble opinion. Okay, so what are we doing here today? We're switching into my new YSL Muse 2. And if you're here for the drama, there was lots of drama, lots of theatrics. It was what it was. I'm sorry, thank you for sitting through it. The bag came very squished in a very small box. And I have a couple unboxings coming up for you and I have some more smashed items, which it is what it is. What can you do? So let's switch into this bag. What do I have here? First and foremost, this bag is, as you can see, completely lined in jewel suede. I'm a little nervous putting my nice Chanel glasses case in there and color transfer. Funny story, I once had a Mark by Mark Jacobs packable shopper tote in like black nylon, and it stayed in my Versace sunglasses case, and I thought I could call customer service and complain, and it was a very awkward conversation. So we don't wanna have a repeat of that. So what are we gonna do? We are going to switch over to my very abused and neglected Versace case that has a gum wrapper in there for some reason, and put them back where they belong. Goodbye to chaos for the week. And you know, I'm starting a new work week tomorrow and well, by the time you see this, my work week's already halfway through. Does anyone else agree that starting the work week off with a new bag just makes it all better? Or is that just me? I don't know. Is there anything good about a new work week? No, not really. Anyway, <laughs> so this bag, it's absolutely fabulous. If you haven't already seen my review, go and check it out, links down below. There is an inside zip pocket, which isn't attached on the sides. Well, I mean, it is attached at the top, just not down the side. So it's kind of free floating in there. So yes, your things can kind of move around inside, but I'm thinking the suede will help kind of keep things in place, if you know what I mean, because it's more, more tactile, more sticky, more friction, I guess. So let's get that in there. Uh, my extra gum, of course. Gotta have fresh breath, I guess. Headphones in my Balenciaga case. Prada six key holder. I think, yeah, I mean, that's a vibe. I'm going to use my Taiga in green wallet with this bag, that's, that's pretty cool. It's of course that bifold style that I like, so we'll throw that down in there. And I have something new for my toiletry pouch to share with you guys. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> so I have my Posh Toilet 15 here, of course, and as you all know, but some of you are new, so what do I keep in here? We have the vaccine card, <laughs> Shiseido blotting papers, Chanel lip balm, and I picked up today at Nordstrom the 30 milliliter Shiseido Urban Environment Oil-Free UV Protector Broad Spectrum SPF 42. Might come as a surprise, but I am in my 30s watch it. And um, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I should start taking better care of my skin because you only get one face, well, before your first facelift. And 
This was just fun. I love Shiseido products. I've always had good experience with, with them. So let's try some new face sunscreen out. Now, let me know in the comments if any of you use this. Good results, bad results. I wanna hear it all. Just like with bag restoration places, let me know your opinion down there. And yeah, we're gonna be trying that out this week and then maybe I'll do a review. No, it's not a beauty channel. I'm not gonna give you a review. I lied, sorry. Maybe I'll bring it up in the next get ready with me or what have you. Anyway, you guys, so let's stick my vaccine card back in there. Are we all done with it by now? I'm ready to ditch the mask. Like I'm very pro mask and you should do what's best to keep you safe, but I'm ready to like go out and have fun again Like it's been a couple years. I'm getting a little tired That's just my two cents on the on the on the matter But I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon Unfortunately, let's toss this in there and honestly this green everything looks good with this green does it not this bag is gorgeous All right, you guys. So what did we learn today? Not much So I was thinking too with Chanel and they're now limiting customers to two quota bags a year Which is insane like way to try and kill your business. I guess Supply and demand, that is also going to really increase the investment value or the perceived investment value when these companies are eliminating bags. Like look at Hermes. You can walk into an Hermes, buy a Birkin for, I don't know, like eight to 10 grand, turn around and sell it for 30 just because you can't get one. I mean, in order to think of yourself and price yourself and treat yourself like an Hermes, don't you think you need the quality to go with it? I said what I said. Anyway, so I think we can expect on the resale market for Chanel especially, Prices are going to increase for those special quota bags, your flaps, your this, your that, whatever. And just in general, do I think bags are a good investment still? No, I think fashion is so fickle, it's so cyclical. One minute you're in, the next minute you're out, as Heidi Klum would say. And let's just drop the word investment from handbags altogether, because they're not. Let's be honest, they're not. I think your investments are things like in your stock portfolio, real estate, you know, tangible, your what are, what, NFTs, what are the kids talking about these days? I don't know. Your tangible, like money-making passive income, that's an investment. This is just a handbag. I could be at a restaurant tomorrow and the waiter spills my drink all over it and then it's worth nothing. Think about it. Unless you're keeping them in pristine condition in a hermetically sealed case, it's not an investment. Anyway, that's just my two cents. I would love to know what you guys think. So sound off down in the comments. Let me know. Have you had good resale experiences? If you've kept a bag more than let's say five years, did you get back more than a quarter of what you spent originally? Let me know, I'm interested. In my experience, I bought really smart the last time around and I sold really smart. There was one bag that I took a loss on, took the L if you will, and I shouldn't have. I was so close to my finish line of selling everything. I just wanted it gone and I think I sold it for like half of what I paid, which is stupid because the bag still goes for more than what I paid. Anyway, long story short, shame on me. Yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you guys on Sunday. Again, sound off with any questions you have for me because I'm really excited to do this Q&A for you guys. Yeah, other than that, have a great week. I will see you in the next one. Stay safe, have fun. Bye-bye.